Uh, welcome back to the first annual Vintage Computer Midwest. Our next speaker is Hans Franks, all the way, Hans Frank, all the way from Germany. He is going to give a short 30 minute talk about photographing microcomputers. Come on. Okay, that's me. Now, let's restart. Oh, I got a little correction here. I'm from Bavaria, okay? <laughs> I mean, there is some Germany around Bavaria, but I mean, there's an important part in Germany, and that's Bavaria, and then there's Munich, and then there's me. <laughs> um, years already started out, I, I got my first computer, which I didn't need, in 83, because that was a pet. It was like in, in 76, I was running around all the time in the department store where they had one pet set up. And I mean, I wanted to have it, but I didn't have the money. I was a student back then, so. In, in 80, I got me an Apple. No, 79, I got me an Apple. And in 83, I finally got the pet for just 200 marks. And that was the first machine I just bought for, well, having it. Which is, I guess, the, the most important motivation for most people. Having stuff, yeah. collecting <laughs> stuff, hoarding stuff, get buried by their stuff. <laughs> um, now, what I'm talking about is about doing photos, because I guess every one of you already tried to take a few photos of their computers, put them on the web, get them nicely outdone. And I guess every one of you already run in a lot of problems with that. Because as still such a computer might be, as difficult it is to take a photo here. I experienced that very much last year, yeah, last year, when I finally get myself together to get this calendar done. I don't, need, I don't know, some of you might have seen it already upstairs. I was going ahead to get a bunch of photos of computers I have. I was, I was dreaming for a calendar like that for years. So I tried to start it off. And I did run in a lot of difficulties about taking photos. Um, so I ended up doing like 300 photos in a four-day session just to get 12 usable out of there. I mean, the, the first and important thing about getting a photo of a computer is light. You have to get this computer visible to the camera. Um, how do I put that in English? I'm sorry, I'm mangling up the language, okay? So, um, it is very important to have a, a light source which really doesn't give a lot of shadows on a computer. Because usually you think of, of a picture has to have shadows. So you see some structure in there. If you try that with a computer with shadows, you just get dark pictures, uneven lighted pictures. Huh? So the most important thing if you start off is getting a light source or several light sources all around to give, give really a shadow free lightning to your computer picture and get all the details out there. Now the second most important thing is either take a real camera, which means analog film, or a definitely high resolution camera. If you look later on maybe on these pictures, you will notice that they are really fine detailed. Now what I took here is a 12 and a half megapixel camera bag. It, um, It took me some time to figure it out because I started out like everyone. Oh yeah, having like three megapixels, wow, will give perfect pictures. So I tried three megapixel camera and I ended up with, when I blow up the pictures to a usable size, ended up like just pixels. So I came down to me to rent a camera back for a Hasselblad camera, a real back for 12 megapixels, 12 and a half and restart the whole session because um, it just didn't work out with a regular camera. It just didn't get the, the detailed structure, the in-deep view in there as I wanted to have. You're still talking about the, the digital camera? Yeah, digital camera. Oh, okay, not the real camera. Okay. Well, if you have a real camera, yeah. you can skip all the problems with digital cameras. I mean, digital cameras are neat. Digital cameras are like the codex of today. Pick, 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 take your picture and run away. Just to do real good photos, all of these 
cameras are, if you want to have detailed photos, are just not advanced enough. I mean, the camera bag I used here, I rented it. Cost me for renting for two days, 300 bucks. Uh, if, I, if I would have bought it, it would have been like what I said, 14 or 15,000 euro. So make it up to like $16,000. Uh, well, I would never spend that, but I have a shop nearby who rents that out, so I'm easy off. Now, if you take real camera, real film, you got a resolution way beyond that. Of course, you run there in, in different problems with the uh, um, Belichtungszeit. Missing a word here. Light no, the, the shutter timing shutter and so on. Uh, which you don't have on a, on a digital camera, because digital camera is basically instant, which is, of course, good for most casual picture taking, and including here. Um, having said that about the resolution and the light, the next most important step was getting in life to the computers. Because one problem I did, and I didn't come up with the idea until very late, was I pictured all the computers, or some of the computers, dead. They're not showing anything. It's just a screen. I mean, when I was standing there in front, and for, for myself, it was a perfect good picture, and I loved it, until I almost at the end of the session realized they are dead. They are totally dead. So some of these photos really show off a little bit screen work, like, no, let's go here. No. Here you go. Here we got a running display. Just showing off as the machine is after switch on. Now here, com digital photography comes really to work here, because you have to do two pictures of this. You have to have one picture showing of the machine in the beginning, very well lightning, and so on. And then from exactly the same angle, with lower lighting, and the computer switched on, and then go into Photoshop and combine both of the pictures. Because you will never get the fluorescent lighting in here, the LEDs, and the computer lighted at the same time. Believe me, for that picture, I was working like five hours. Of course, we tried every combination with, with two friends of mine who were professional photographers. And we really tried every combination to get it on until we said, screw it, we do two photos and use Photoshop. Yeah. So that is the big advantage of digital photography. You could combine in later details, which I also happened to have with one of the other computers. Coming back to Photoshop, if we take the, the Amstrad machine we have here, you may come on here later on and really look at the picture. This keyboard is perfectly fine. Well, except the computer had only one shift key because the other one got broken while I took the computer out of storage for the photographing session. The other one got really broken because the computer dropped and I stepped on the key. I mean, oh. screw me. <laughs> yeah. But since it was shift key and usually a machine has two of them, we just copied. Now you got me there. I don't know if we copied the left to the right or the right to the left. <laughs> just take a look on there you will never notice really the difference. Because the photo was taken, then we moved the shift key over, took another photo. This didn't work out, because originally we thought, OK, we just take two photos, combine them, so we get the real lightning on each key, because each key will be different lighted. You have to really look for the details. Yeah? Uh, didn't work out, but we had a master, so we took one of the photos, moved the key over, and just changed in Photoshop the lightning in a way that as it was looking on the other picture. So basically, yeah, this is made up. But these are also the advantages you could do if you go digital. So going digital was a real uh, good decision on here. Um, yeah, what more? I mean, it comes all back to the lightning all the time again. Whatever your computer look on here, it is the lightning. And as soon as you in with the lightning, you have the problem if you want to turn the computer on. Because then you definitely need to take two pictures. 
Um, also, what we tried up here is setting up a computer like the computer with manuals in the background. Obviously, if you start up doing a picture like that, you think it would be fine. Just set up the machines, put the manuals beside like it was as if it is office setup or so on. You will very soon realize that every surface in there reacts different to the, to the lightning and comes out different on the camera. So this was also one of the most complicated pictures to get on one side the computer detailed enough to really read on there and on the other side still have the manuals without just well jumping into your eyes with two bright colors because yeah? you need really strong lightning for the computer because it's rather dark but you don't need that for the white paper because it's it really shines back on the camera now in fact that picture is an original one that has not been modified but was also some work to get it up there now having said that it was just a lot of fun to do that pictures and I want to do it sometime again if I find time again because it's really time consuming there is one guy in Germany who has really put up all his computers with uh, photos on the web I guess most of you already come across it's the uh, home computer dot no home computers dot the it's Steffen Walgenbach and uh, he's a good friend of mine and and he really puts in a lot of time I mean he put up in his attic a real photo studio just to do computers and you see it with the photos in there but still you also see that there is a lot of development if you if you look at his early pictures and then at the later on, you really see how he learned to put up lightning. So this might be even, uh, if, you, if you want to look into taking photos of computers, look onto his website and see his older computers, photos, and the newer ones. So any questions? No? OK. So thank you very much. Yeah, back there. It was four days. But uh, if if I had known all, if I had knew all what I knew now before, it would be like a little bit more than a day. Because you need like three to five photos of each computer to select the best. So you need to play around anyway. But you don't have to experiment with the type of camera to use, with the type of lightning you use, and so on. Um, yeah, type of lightning. You were going for the color temperature. The color temperature isn't really important about the computers. Of course, the computers, yeah, it works out. And also, the computer are not really live objects. They are dead matter anyway. And the colors in computers are usually, um, for one, are artificial anyway. And for the second, they are uh, varying among the machines. I mean, there are purists out there which believe there is a color and I have to reproduce the color. Now, take five apples, five old apple twos, put them side by side, and now tell what was the original color. You can't, because they move over time. Or even if you take out five original packed Kim computers, which I have from the same series, they are just a few hundred numbers away from each other. They have complete different color in the silk screening. So there is no real, that is the color thing. So it isn't so sensitive to color temperature like if you go do photo shooting of a human face, for example, which is very sensitive. And Stu, if you, uh, you got into this a little bit, do you ever look at what the color of something is, like with uh, color inverters or anything like that? Have you ever gotten involved in actually trying to come up with a standard color for something? We go off topic here a bit. No, no, because um, I'm not a fo professional photographer. Also, I don't want to go out onto different media. Like, it's very important to get your color temperature right if you want to go, like, on the web and on print. Maybe I'm more thinking of the question of trying to reproduce uh, or, or repaint or whatever. I'll get back to an original. Like to, like to work on your machine to make it look original if it wasn't. You know, if it was a standard, if you knew oh. it 
you, you think about that. Well, for that is important if you have like metal case computers. If you're restoring a computer, that's your question, right? Well, um, you know, if you have like a metal case, then you should go ahead and learn from the car people. What they do if they restore like a, a 1950s car, they go ahead and send away the dirt, send away the top layers of color, and then they compare the color. And this is what you should, uh, in fact, do with a computer if you want to be really super original. But then again, I mean, take a pet. Commodore was always taking the cheapest paint they could get. I mean, if they could save half a cent on a thousand computers, they would go that way. So you could have really could put Commodore side by side and get different colors. For a Commodore, I mean, sandblast the case and put on a nice gray, white gray. That's it. You'll hit it anyway. <laughs> or, well, e even the most prominent blue thing, an Altair. They also used whatever they could get back then. I mean, all their interest was to get out the machines while the, mon the demand was out there. Yeah? Uh, what's your favorite photograph out of the calendar? Oh. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's another interesting topic in here. Because I intended the calendar to be sold. Just, I completely screwed it up by being a total geek. I mean, I put in here 12 computers from 10 countries over a time frame of about 10 years, 12 years. Yeah? Because I wanted to, to really show off the variety of computers. I wanted to show off special machines. Machines which were important. Well, later on I learned, for a commercial success, I just have punched out a calendar with Commodore 64, Amigas, uh, Apple IIs, Tandys, and that's it, and maybe a next cube in there, and maybe whatever, an indie or something like that. But mainly doing mainstream stuff, instead of putting so much thought in what would be a cool machine. The problem is most people don't recognize the cool machines. Most people want to have an Altair, a Pet, and an Apple II, and an X. So um, selecting the photos in there was really, it, it, was, it was extremely hard. Because I first had to come up with a theme. My theme was really showing off what was out there in the world. So. I tried to really show from as many countries as possible. So there is a computer in there. There are two computers in there from the US, but there are also computers in there from the UK, from France, from, from Japan, from even from Estonia is one machine in there. I don't know. Most people recognize the country? Little country on the Baltic Sea, belonged uh, for several times to the US, uh, not US, the other country with the U, USSR. USSR. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so I tried to come up with a variation of computers. I mean, I could put like a calendar, a page for each week and still couldn't really decide on what computer to take. It, I mean, it's hard. How many computers do you have? A dozen. You have a dozen? Well, you're lucky with a dozen. You could exactly put every of your favorite computers on there. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it was really, it was really tough and so basically, I was going by the theme having as much diversity from different countries to show different approaches to computers instead of going for the most popular or whatever. As for myself, I would have maybe started out with an Apple II, of course, because the Apple II was my original machine, the one where I really put in the most time. Just uh, you won't find an Apple II in there. Instead, I have for an American machine, I have the Kim in there and I have the digital group uh, Z80 system in there, which I think is way cool in a wooden, well, just on a wooden plate, which shows off what it's been made of back then. I mean, in 1977, hobbyists were just taking whatever they could get to build up a computer. So having just a board taken out, probably out of a kitchen furniture, and mount the computer on there, it, it is just cool, I think. Any more questions? What's your next project? Can you do it again? 
I, w I would definitely love to. Just um, if I do it again, I will do it for the photography on the same way. Just I won't go all the length for printing because I wasted an awful lot of money in here because I wanted to have real print. So they really made up plates for that. This is not a digiprint thing. Because that, that was for years and years my dream to have the perfect computer calendar. And uh, well, I'm not only a geek in there, I'm, I'm definitely an idiot in there to do so. Just uh, it was worth to do it. <laughs> I, I guess I come up next year with another calendar. Uh, it will be someone ready around November this year, so late. Again. Well, that was the other thing I learned. I mean, I had that calendar done in February 2004. This is a 2005 calendar. So I figured February 2004 would be fine just to learn that wherever I want to sell that, they are already in the year 2007. They always go three years ahead with calendars. So this is also something you have to learn if you want to go for a calendar. Make it four years ahead and not just for the next year. So I will probably do one. Just it will just have like a small run of a 50 to 100 prints. And so I'm not wasting too much money on there. Uh, well, here's a hint that the world could use a good book. And get as many computers as you can and just print up a nice big fat book. Um, there is a book out there done by uh, Michael Nadau. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, it's called, oh, kick me, Old Man, Bad Memory, Com Complete col Computer Collector's Guide or something like that. Got an orange outfit, a few computer. sorry? There you go. Um, you can still get it. He published it like last year and he got m like four or five hundred machines in there, all with a very short description. And um, it is, it's definitely worth the money. I was going through there, through each description, I could find like four or five minor errors or things I would have worded different. But then again, means being a geek means I have my own op uh, um, opinion on a computer thing. And you know how you could fight about computers? Remember the old Atari versus Commodore wars? <laughs> no, it never happened, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my actual project is, is rather into hardware again. This is also what I'm showing off upstairs. It's a new prototype card for the Apple II. So at the moment, I'm, I'm very much occupied with doing new hardware, like a USB interface and things like that. It's just fun to fiddle around with hardware again. And I mean, it is so much fun to use modern style uh, uh, components like CPLDs of, or FPGAs, where you basically could put in the whole Apple into one chip, use that for interface. You could do so much on there, and this is just like, yeah, let's do it. Okay, any more questions? How's the Ethernet Sorry? How's the Ethernet card? What Ethernet card? Well, there at the moment are three Ethernet cards out there. I ain't do one on my own. Well, I try to avoid to do one, but maybe it kicks me. Uh, there's the Lance GS, which is just working with the, with the two GS. Then there is the... It is a card using the Swiss chip 3010A. Don't remember the name. And then there's brand new, the Ethernet card, uh, which is using the... IP Dragon module, and that one even works in a 2E. And there is an adapted version of the Contiki environment, so you can run, well, you really could log on to the internet with an Apple 2E with that card. Uh, beside that prototype card I just did, I'm, I'm working on the uh, USB card, which in the last design features the EZ80 uh, processor. Uh, which happens to have um, a 100 megabit interface on chip. So I'm tempted to do so, but on the other hand, doing all the drivers is, is too much work. So I guess I stay with the USB port. 
Okay. Thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, maybe see you upstairs.